वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला ऑन द सब्जेक्ट सोशल मेडिसिन कम्युनिटी हेल्थ आई एम प्रोफेसर सी पी मिश्रा वर्किंग इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कम्युनिटी मेडिसिन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेज बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी एंड आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द मॉड्यूल स्टेटा डिस्पोजल विच स्पेशल रेफरेंस टू सीवेज डिस्पोजल this module belongs to the paper environmental health as far as production of this module is concerned it has been developed by a team comprising of myself as principal investigator the paper has been coordinated by dr v m gupta who happens to be ex professor and head of the department of community medicine institute of medical sciences banaras hindu university varanasi and the paper is written by myself along with dr e k sri from the department of community medicine ims bhu varanasi and the content has been reviewed by dr j tandon ex professor and head Department of Community Medicine, Institute of Medical Sciences, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi. A number of learning objectives have been set for this session. The first and foremost is the one should be able to define sewage and estate properties of influencing its. quality the quality of the sewage number 2 distinguish between biological oxygen and chemical oxygen demands state objectives of sewage purification and state components of water carry system and finally mention different methods of sewage treatment and enumerate salient features of total sanitary campaign that is being carried out in the country as far as quality of sewage is concerned quality of sewage plays a role in the design and construction of various treatment units treated sewage can be disposed of in natural stream or river and contains both inorganic and organic organic matter depends the quality of sewage depends on physical chemical and biological properties of sewage and physical properties around 1 lakh units of sewage contains 100 units of solids liquid content of normal sewage is 99.9% so specificity of sewage is very nearly equal to water color of water is very earthy or gray and it has soapy or oily smell it contains some matter which can be easily identified when the sewage is fresh such matter in includes fecal matter or night soil pieces of paper cigarette ends grease fruit kin soap match sticks vegetable debris it is an adult on an average expends 100 g of sewage per day and quantity of sewage may be more if the number of people in home our nation is more other than these personal habits morning and evening time and the quality of sewage system influences the quantity of sewage so sewage its proper disposal has been, been big challenge 
in spite of a lot of emphasis on this. The reason being simple that this environmental procedure involves huge cost and in a country where nearly half of the people are still resorting to open for edification, this becomes a big challenge. Only those persons we have been brought into the civil system, they can derive its benefit. And depending on the physical and other properties of the sewage, its treatments can be undertaken. There are two important indicators. One is biological oxygen demand and another is chemical oxygen demand, which is concerned with the properties of sewage or the strength of its sewage. Now, the strength of sewage disposed from various sources in terms of biological oxygen demand. Biological oxygen demand is the amount of oxygen absorbed by a sample of sewage during 5 days at 20 degrees centigrade for aerobic destruction or use of organic matter by living organisms. So, it signifies that the oxygen absorbed by a sample of sewage in 5 days and the basic purpose of the oxygen utilization is aerobic destruction or use of organic matter by living organisms. Based on the biological oxygen demand, sewage can be classified as normal. 1 to 300 mg per liter is BOD, weak less than 100 mg per and strong more than 300 mg per liter is the biological oxygen demand. Now, another important measure of strength of sewage is chemical oxygen demand. This uh, the technique used to detect organic waste in chemical sewage, COD is the oxygen equivalent of that portion of organic matter in a sample susceptible to oxidation by a strong chemical oxidizer. Now, discussing that sewage is basically predominantly comprises of liquid portion and 0.1 percent of solid portion and it contains excreta. There are a number of objectives that for serious purification because if there is an indiscriminate disposal of sewage, then it may lead to many problems in terms of soil contamination, water bodies contamination, air pollution and so on. And therefore, one of the major objective of sewage purification is conservation of environment. We should have the environment conducive for human health and conducive for other organisms as well. So, conservation of environment has been kept in the mind and that was the reason why a lot of emphasis has been given on proper disposal of sewage and many of the diseases can be controlled if this is taken care of. The second important aspect is that urbanization is taking place globally. It is expected by the year 2050, a considerable portion of the world will be living in city areas and in city areas there is no space for open fortification. So, proper disposal of sewage should be an inbuilt component of any town planning because cities are growing very fast, they are expanding very fast and that is causing a lot of problem in the urban slums in terms of safe disposal of etc. 
The third important thing is stabilizing the organic substances means breaking down them into carbon dioxide, nitrate and water so that they do not rot. This is another important electric power consideration in the sewage verification. Obtaining such pathogens free effluent that can be discharged without any problem. So whatever sewage is flowing through sewage system that be, should be treated in such a manner that the effluent doesn't cause any harm and it can be disposed without any problem. After purification, sewage water can be safely used for irrigation and other agricultural activities. That's another important because water is a very precious resource and majority of the water you are using for agricultural purposes. So this sewage, sewage water, after treatment it can be utilized efficiently for irrigation and agricultural activities. Protecting the water supply system, water resources may get contaminated by improper sewage system. Protection from sewage borne infections and prevention, preventing soil pollution. Now once we have discussed the properties of sewage and why sewage disposal is important in context of public health. Now we will be proceeding to the second part, components of water carriage system. Water carriage or sewage system is the system that collects, transports and disposes of excreta and dirty water from domestic, commercial and industrial establishment. Com there are various types of sewage systems. One is combined sewage system. This type of system collects sewage, rainwater, wastewater from homes and other terminals together. It means its quantity will be very huge and therefore disposal becomes very challenging. There can be separate sewer systems. This system does not allow the surface water to enter into sewers. This system is more preferred today. Components of sewer systems, domestic sanitary equipments or plumbing system of the building. Then we have home sewers, we have street sewers, other than these manhole and traps are the components of the sewer system. In any urban area, their proper disposal of sewage implies that the sanitary equipment or plumbing system of the building, home sewers, street sewers should be correct because many times we find that the many areas there is a over flooded because of the sewers and that cause public nuisance and that becomes a challenge for the municipal corporations for that purpose. So uh, depending on the population size, their size should be properly adequately met. Domestic equipments and fittings, we have Indian water closet, we can have Anglo-Indian water closet, we can have western water closet and home sewer or drain. West water enters the house, sewer through soil pipes and after it has been flushed, pipes of 10 cm diameter that are used as house sewer. Public sewers, manholes and traps are the major associate components of sewer system. Manholes are constructed at turns or junctions of two or more sewers. Now complete sewer system treatment and treatment involves three steps. 
the first step is primary treatment that is the sewage is exposed to the process of primary treatment which includes screening grit removal and primary sedimentation these steps are very very vital in the sense that they will take care of the majority of the substances which are present and that can be easily removed from the sewage system then the second component is secondary treatment that includes biofiltration bioaeration and secondary sedimentation so once the sewer has gone through primary treatment procedure secondary treatment procedures then there is a process known as sludge digestion now within the primary system the first step is screening as it involves passing the incoming sewage through the openings of a screen to hold back floating objects so bigger objects or hold back against a screen the screening removes leaves branches vegetable cuttings waste paper polythene bags woods or charcoal pieces dead animals and various other objects floating in the sewage their removal is desired to optimize the efficiency of the next step to be followed in the sewage disposal it removed by racks or mechanically operated combs and sorted out into inflammable and non inflammable components and disposed either by burning or by burial so screening is the first procedure that is uh, involved in the primary treatment of sewage disposal the second step involved in the primary treatment of the complete sewage system is grit removal grit removal includes sand gravel ash and clay enters in the into the sewer sewers mainly along with the storm water the grit chambers are small tanks through which sewage is allowed to pass at a velocity just sufficient to permit the grit to settle down and the organic matter to pass over grit is removed periodically by manual or mechanical means and disposed of by plain dumping or filtering of low lying areas so once this is grit removal is done then the next step in the primary treatment procedure is the primary sedimentation primary sedimentation is done in a large tank called the sedimentation tank rate of sewage flow in the tank is 1 to 2 feet per minute contact time is around 6 to 8 hours it's subjected to sedimentation for removal of settlement sedimented matter the sludge of a primary treatment tank is highly organic and offensive it is removed periodically to control nuisance and to prevent interference in the sedimentation process here about 72% are ranging from 50 to 70% of the solid settle down and nearly 30 to 40% reduction in the coliforms takes place the dominant animal proteins may be treated with lime aluminum sulfate ferrous sulfate and so on so after passing through the three steps of primary treatment the sewage undergoes goes secondary treatment and the first best method in secondary treatment is biofiltration by that we mean that sewage is allowed to filter through a medium supporting the aerobic bacteria that carry out the biological treatment 
it will be done through trickling filters provided with a sewage sprinkling system where from sewage trickles down on the filter medium and in this process sewage undergoes filtration. Then intermittent sand filtration, beds of sand demarted by earth, embarkments and prepared to serve as intermittent sand filters for biological treatment of sewage. Third, intermittent contact beds, which is an improvement over intermittent sand filter. These beds are watertight, masonry tanks, rectangular in shape, fitted with general material like bricks, crushed stone up to a depth of 4 to 6 feet and a working period of 6 hours. So after this, there is another step in the secondary treatment is bioaeration. This plant consists of a mixing chamber. There is a mixing chamber and an aeration tank. The sewage is first received in the mixing chamber where it is mixed with activated sludge obtained from the secondary sedimentation tank. This rich culture of aerobic bacteria sewage admitted into the aeration tank where it is subjected to compressed air aeration for 5 to 6 hours. Then secondary sedimentation, the aerated sludge either from the trickling filter or aeration tank is exposed in the secondary sedimentation tank 2 to 3 hours. This fully aerated and Partially inoffensive sludge is known as activated sludge. This is divided by bacteria, nitrogen, phosphate and flow and foul odor. Part of this final sludge is pumped into sludge digestion tank. Sludge digestion, sludge incubated at favorable temperature and pH undergoes anaerobic digestion. It stabilizes the organic matter in the sludge with the help of anaerobic bacteria. This anaerobic liquefaction process is solid, liquid and gaseous products. The solid product called digested sludge settles at the bottom of the tank and is periodically removed under hydrostatic pressure. Byproducts of are CO2, water, methane, Ammonia. This is an excellent manure when dried up. So, sludge digestion process produces excellent manure that can be used for agricultural purposes. So, once complete treatment takes place, then there are partial sewage treatment procedures are there. It could be sewage dilution, it could be Oxidation ponds <coughs> and it could be sewage farming. Now, sewage dilution, this method is direct and simple disposal of sewage. Solid part of the sewage gets oxidized, but the sewage should be released deep into the water far away from the coast. River outfall is a hygienically objectionable practice. Sea outfall is practiced knowing that sea has immense potential for stabilizing wastewater by dilution and various other physical, chemical and biological mechanisms naturally present in it. It means putting sewage directly in the large bodies, river outfall or sea outfall. River outfall is certainly dangerous because river is directly connected to human habitation, river water and human activities go hand in hand and that may cause various problems. But sea having with a larger potential for stabilizing waste matter 
is being practiced in many places. The real drawback with sea walk outfall, however, is the nuisance created when sea solutions are lost back on the sea source by sweeping tides. That's a big nuisance because many things that are thrown are put into the seabed, many times that are brought to, to the back of the, the back on the sea source by sweeping tides and that creates a public nuisance and many hazards can take place. Sea outfall also leads to infection of the selfies and other organisms that can lead to the food poisoning and food bowl infections. Oxidation pond, it is synonymous to waste stabilization pond or redox pond or sea waste lagoon. It is extremely suitable for the areas with a small population, small towns and commercial establishments. Oxygen pond is an open shallow pool, 1 to 1.5 meter deep. Algae matter in the seaweed is oxidized by bacteria in the presence of sunlight to CO2, industry and water. Oxygen ponds are predominantly aerobic, only the bottom layers are aerobic at the night. The last method that is sewage farming, it is an old age, age old method of sewage treatment. This method can be used for small communities where a lot of land is available and soil porous. After preliminary treatment, screening and sedimentation, the sewage is made to flow into the land on which ridges and furrows have been made. Crops that don't come in direct contact with the sewage on the land can be cultivated through this method. Sewage farming is not possible in the rainy season. So sewage farming has a very poten big potential for absorbing a lot of water. But there are potential danger of contamination of food and in many during flood it can be a real threat for the human habitation. But certainly sewage farming is being encouraged because most of the material is rich in nutrients and that can help, uh, help in the production of the many types of vegetables and many other products. So we have just discussed sewage disposal is a very important job of any public health system. In India, as per census data of 2011, half of the people are resorting to open for identification. Those figures vary in urban and rural areas. But those who are have latrine provisions in their houses, majority have they have their have their own system of disposal by pit method or any other method or septic tanks. But where there are sewer system, then the See, the feces are passing through that system and sewage contains 99.9% .9 water and 1.1% solid, uh, solid uh, in terms of 0.1% solid in terms of human excreta and their disposal is very important to preserve the environment to take care of many diseases so that waterborne diseases, foodborne diseases are not taking place in that particular area. And this disposal system requires a lot of financial outlays because in municipalities, in cities, the water care system should be such that that there should be no overflows in the communities. Severe is overflowing in the communities and that is causing much harm. And there should be a gradient so that the, this is well taken care of 
and that can be subjected to complete treatment that is through primary, secondary treatment and also self-digestion. There are other, other methods, methods like oxygenation pond, like that or agricultural farming systems after treatment. They, uh, they supplement the activity of that and uh, we can conclude by saying that sewage contains 99.9% .9 water, 0.1% solid matter is in the form of the excreta. Quality of sewage depends on physical, chemical and biological properties of sewage. It plays important role in the design and construction of various treatment units also. The strength of sewage is expressed in terms of biological oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand. Water carry system may be of three types, combined, separate and component sewage system. Component sewage system is the best. Complete sewage system comprises of primary and secondary treatment as well as self-digestion. And we have three steps involved in primary process and primary treatment and three steps involved in secondary treatment process. After purification, sewage water can be safely used for irrigation and other agricultural activities. And any country which has efficient sewage disposal system is more civilized and because that takes care of protection of the environment and many water, food, bone diseases are taken care of if this is in place. Thank you very much for visiting EPG Parts of